I'm Stephen Foskett. I'm the organizer of the Tech Field Day events. And one of the things that's come up at a lot of Tech Field Day events is the idea of agentic AI. Now, obviously, we do AI Field Day. Uh, we do Cloud Field Day, App Dev Field Day. Again and again, we're hearing more and more about agentic AI. So what is it? That's what I'm going to talk about here on this session. So first off, agentic AI is the idea that instead of just having a um, interface with the computer that is uh, AI based, essentially a large language model that you talk to, the idea of agentic AI is that you would have a, an autonomous AI agent that would act on your behalf, essentially um, automating various processes for you. Uh, now, there's different ways that this can be implemented. Some people are talking about having it be a, uh, an AI agent that constantly runs and is constantly collecting information and, and performing actions on your behalf. Others see it more as sort of the glue in a, more of a business process automation task. And frankly, when I think about agentic AI, that's really how I see it. I see it as a way to take maybe not very well-formed inputs and generate much better formed outputs or to generate decisions based on those inputs that don't necessarily have a very strict structure. I am a big enthusiast of uh, business process automation and process automation generally, uh, Zapier, uh, Active Pieces, IFTTT, all that sort of thing. Well, agentic AI functions similarly to, the, to that. The idea is that you would set up processes and then your AI agent would act for you on your behalf. Many times agentic AI is using uh, some of the same technology under the hood. In fact, many of these things are actually built out of large language models, but they don't necessarily have to be. And in fact, I think over time, they're going to be more and more special purpose built and not specifically um, LLMs that you're just hoping for the best are gonna generate something. So. You've got essentially uh, classical automation systems, like I mentioned, and then you've got AI. And those of us who have been working with uh, process automation know that the, the hardest part about automating tasks is not building the automation. The hardest part is keeping that automation going as inputs change, as data formats change, as unexpected things happen, as systems break, and so on. And if you've done a lot of this kind of automation, you've said, man, I wish that there was something with even just a modicum of intelligence that could respond appropriately during the process flow. So, for example, if I'm trying to take um, inputs from a variety of uh, file sources. You know, I want all the images that come out of Tech Field Day. I want to process them. I want to store them in the right folder. I want to share some of them on social media, all that sort of thing. Those are processes that I actually automate myself, but they break all the time because what happens, right? Somebody will upload a PNG instead of a JPEG, right? Or the upload will fail because, I don't know, something didn't work all, all, all along the way. Then the whole rest of the process just falls over and dies. What we would want would be a system that would be smart enough to say, oh, hey, this upload hasn't finished yet. I think I need to wait. Or this is a PNG. I think I need to convert that. Or this data input, this uh, website isn't formatted the way I normally expect it to be, but I can see that the text that I want is on this website. And one of the most specific examples that I've heard recently when talking with uh, getting uh, briefings as, as I do with companies was um, in basically enterprise uh, data processing where they have uh, input data, let's say like um, insurance audits and reports on casualty, uh, you know, floods, fires, that sort of thing. Well, those things aren't always processed or, or written clearly. The data isn't always completely filled out. There's not always a lot of information. It could come in ver a variety of different formats and forms and so on. They're using an AI agent, an LLM, to actually process that data as part of an overall business process automation. And so they have an, an LLM that they've trained to handle just whatever kind of text you throw at it, and it pulls out the valuable nuggets, and then it outputs a JSON formatted data table that is usable by the next step in the automation. That's a, a simple AI agent. A more complex one would actually be watching that data, making decisions based on that input data, and then having more complex tasks come out of that. 
Another important aspect is that agentic AI agents, they don't require you to specifically engineer their prompts, that they can prompt themselves, which is a little bit scary for those of you who've seen the Terminator movies, but uh, you know, it, it's actually not that scary. The idea is that they can be more resilient and that they can provide much better connections between processes. So here's how most agentic AI systems work. Essentially, you have LLMs that figure out on their own how to fit into ex established workflows. You have them able to call external data sources, just like RAG systems you know, can uh, query uh, database documents. Um, these AI agents could call external data sources, even simple things like a calculator or a weather report or a uh, list of clients or whatever it is. And then they can discover those data sources, they can discover the content of those, they can integrate them, and then they can act, take actions on their own on your behalf. So as the data flows in, they're basically out uh, sitting there collecting information, bringing it together, and then making that process go to the next step. Unlike a traditional business automation system where it's very, very mechanical, it's very, this data comes in, you do this specific thing, then you go on to the next process. So think about what we could do with this. So for example, in a sales automation uh, system like Conversica, you could have a uh, AI-based agent that looks at sales opportunities, that looks at customer qualities, that decides what the right pitch is for this customer as opposed to that customer, as opposed to this other customer. Any one of us who's been subject to mail merge knows, um, hello, first name, you know, it's, it was nice meeting you at fill in show here, you know? Well, theoretically, a system like this wouldn't make those kind of mistakes. In fact, theoretically, a system like this would say, you know, hey, John, it was interesting meeting you at the um, happy hour after this expo session. And, and, and it would be able to find that out by looking in your calendar, by looking in at aspects of this. You know, customers like you in the real estate agency business are interested in using our tool because of this and this. And smaller companies like yours are specifically benefiting. You know, all this can be fed in through from a Salesforce or something like that. And it can make a much more compelling um, pitch for a potential customer. Another idea would be to do something similar to this, as I said, um, you know, using Salesforce, um, Agent Force, which they just announced, in order to make Salesforce uh, more useful, which everybody would love. And um, similarly, we're seeing a lot of this stuff internally with, for example, cybersecurity, uh, where you would have a, a firewall that isn't just acting on rules, but it, that, that's monitoring what's happening and in real time adjusting its own rules based on the type of attacks that it's seeing. And that's uh, what Darktrace is talking about. Essentially, again, it's all about autonomy. It's all about having an AI agent that can have ambiguous data input, that can act on its own, that can plan things, that can learn things, that has a, a memory buffer. Now, I don't want to anthropomorphize it too much because anyone who's actively been involved in AI understands that when we talk about intelligence, it's not the same as human intelligence. We're talking about systems that are really statistically based. But that being said, you know, we use terms like memory and agency as if they were more actual people, but they're not. They're essentially self-guiding and self-actualizing computer programs that, that support us and work on our behalf. There are a lot of frameworks and toolkits out there. Um, this graph came from Langgraph, for example, which is a, uh, a, a structure, a toolkit for working with these things. We've got Autogen, um, which is an uh, open source project from Microsoft. We've got Crew AI, which has been getting a lot of buzz out there as a SaaS platform that businesses are using to build their own AI agents. 
And these frameworks are allowing companies to roll this stuff out really quickly. Essentially, there was no agentic AI last year at this time. And this year at this time, there are SaaS platforms that are being used by some of the biggest names in the industry, which is absolutely incredible. And I'll point out too, we actually just had a company, Integrail, present at AI Field Day um, talking about uh, building an agentic AI platform as well. And that's one of the reasons that I decided to stand up here and talk about this a little bit. Now, there are problems. Um, yes, these things can act on their own, but they're not perfect, obviously. Um, they still use LLMs. They can still hallucinate. They can still have errors. They can still have incomplete data. And this could be potentially extremely costly when you have these things executing on their own. So if you built, for example, a stock trading agent that learned all sorts of things, well, you might not like the trades that it makes, but you've empowered it to make those trades and it's going to make them without you, uh, you know. And so you want to put guardrails around it. You want to make sure that your framework is um, contained enough that, that you're not going to let these agents really just go nuts. I mean, I wouldn't want, for example, a uh, calendaring agent to control my schedule because it might schedule some things that I might, you know, in times that I might not want to, uh, want or with people that I might want to not want to talk to. Uh, and of course, we have to worry too about the ethical challenges of using these things. You know, if we're having an AI agent that is really, you know, conversing with people, there's the chance that it may say things in ways that we don't like, that it may make promises that we wouldn't want it to make on our behalf. And ultimately, as we've seen um, already with chatbots, if we empower an agent to act on our behalf, then we have to be ready to meet the promises that agent makes to customers. So as a business person, if I have an AI agent that is, for example, pitching customers and it starts making lowball offers on, uh, on sales, well, then I might have to actually live up to that because... I empowered it. I allowed it to do this. And this could really impact how these things are uh, taken up in the future. But that being said, I really do think that there's a, a huge future for agentic AI. I see a lot of businesses very excited about this. And more importantly, I see business process automation and sales management as areas that really are, they, they suffer. They're, they don't do a good job. They're not as good as people wish. Uh, businesses spend a lot of money on these things and they don't get the results that they want. And I think that that these AI agents are going to be very attractive to customers like that. So I see a huge potential here. I think that this really is a paradigm shift for customer service, for uh, operations. And yet I'm worried about how these things will actually work and whether they'll actually work in practice. But Again, we're hearing a lot more about it. Uh, people are constantly coming, uh, coming up with new AI agent-based platforms. And conventional platforms, conventional process automation platforms, are rapidly adopting AI agent-type capability. I think it's inevitable that we're going to be dealing with this. And frankly, I think this is the next wave of AI applications that we're going to see uh, following the rapid uh, adoption of LLMs and generative AI. So that's what I've got to say about uh, AI agents.